Somebody ought to make a... If you want a little argument, I'm more than happy, because we can argue outside when you're there. 48 hours later, the Prime Minister visited Lebedev at his home in London. What first attracted the Prime Minister to the billionaire Russian oligarchs? <laughs> The Deputy Prime Minister oversaw our Foreign Intelligence Services as Foreign Secretary. So can he confirm if at any time he overruled or ignored direct advice from the British Security Services? Deputy Prime Minister. Can I say to the Honourable Lady, it's, what she suggests is nonsense. Uh, she's talking about the House of Lords Appointments Commission. Uh, they have a vetting process. Uh, I have never overruled. Uh, intelligence advice and I wouldn't comment on the details of it. The Right Honourable Member was Foreign Secretary on the 17th of March 2020 when British intelligence reportedly warned against the granting of peerage to the Prime Minister's close friend and now Lord Lebedev of Hampton and Siberia. 48 hours later the Prime Minister visited Lebedev at his home in London. Details of that meeting have never been released. In July 2020, Lebedev's appointment as peer was announced. So can he tell the House what changed between the security warning and the appointment? All individuals nominated for a peerage have done so in recognition of what their contribution is to society. And, and I should say, and I should say, I should say, that includes those of Russian origin who contribute brilliantly to our nation. Life peerages are vetted by the House of Lords Appointments Commission uh, for, for matters of probity, and, and frankly, I think she should know better. What I do know better is the central duty of any government is to keep the British people safe. Can he guarantee that the Prime Minister never asked anyone to urge the security services to revise, reconsider, or withdraw their assessment of Lord Lebedev of Hampton and Siberia. Deputy Prime Minister. The, the suggestion she's making is sheer nonsense. Yeah. Their failure has left us all vulnerable, relying on another murderous dictator to keep the lights on and pumps open. Oh, oh. I'm going to hear this question. If some people don't want... <laughs> Somebody ought to make a... If you want a little argument, I'm more than happy because we can argue outside when you're there. So I ask the Deputy Prime Minister, is their only plan to keep on begging? <laughs> Deputy Prime Minister. Well, can, I, can I just um, uh, gently say to the Honourable Lady that when she was campaigning, as the rest of them were, to make the Honourable Member for Islington North Prime Minister, this Prime Minister was Foreign Secretary leading the response to the nerve agent attack. Hold on, hold on. I hate to say it, you can't keep going back for 12 years as a defensive mechanism. What we want to do, I'll decide, thank you. Oh, 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 oh. What I want you to do, Deputy Prime Minister, please, if we can try and stick to the general, I have a lot of people ahead of me who are desperate to get in without talking about history. How far we want to go back is one thing in passing. Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, when, when she was. Oh, 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 Sir Desmond is not responsible for the opposition's policies. This is about the government. This is about questions to the Deputy Prime Minister. I'll put the questions and decide which are right. Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I was, uh, wanted just to point out, and I hope it's not uh, ancient history, that the Prime Minister was, as Foreign Secretary, galvanising the response to the nerve agent attack uh, in Salisbury at the time where the Honourable Member, the former leader of the Labour Party, uh, was, was siding with Putin against the UK. What did the Honourable Lady have to say on Sky News? He's a very strong leader. She can't wait for him to become Prime Minister. Angela Rayner. Mr. Mr Speaker, there is a war in Europe. There is a...
war in Europe. There is a fuel energy crisis in Britain. Democracy is at risk. These uncertain times require leadership with integrity, a leader that works with the security services. Instead, Mr Speaker, we have this sorry excuse of a government sat before us. They hike, 20, they hike tax on 27 million working people while the super rich increase their wealth. They watch energy prices rise by over 50 per cent while the companies enjoy profits they didn't even expect. And they cavort with Russian oligarchs in luxury villas while neglecting the security of the British people. And remember, Mr Speaker, they parted while the country was in lockdown and were unable to see their dying loved ones. Can the Deputy Prime Minister look the British people in the eye and really say this government is doing their best in their interest? When it comes to tennis, when it, when it comes to tennis, the Prime Minister enjoys the company of and backhanders of Lubov Chernikin. When it came to celebrating the election victory, the Prime Minister prioritised uh, the party hosted by the former KGB agent Alexander Lebedev. He has a great many others, such as uh, Viktor Pelotov and uh, uh, Alex Tomerko as friends. Um, can he therefore tell us uh, what first attracted the Prime Minister to the billionaire Russian oligarchs? <laughs> the Prime Minister. I wasn't quite sure where he was going at the beginning of his question, but what I can tell him, of course, the Prime Minister is not just uh, a very social individual. He. Are, are any oligarchs with UK passports on our sanctions list? Can I, can I thank the Chair of the ISC? I think I would have to let the Foreign Secretary and the Foreign Office check carefully and respond to him in due course.